So as we're all aware, fish safety is absolutely paramount. So a lot of the footage you guys are going to see this week will be done in the lake. The pieces to camera and some of the stills will be done there. That's been agreed with the fishery and Ian that for fish safety reasons, it's going to be quick and easy to get a little bit of footage for you guys to see and slip them back. Also, this end of the lake is ridiculously weedy. So the chances are all three of us are going to need to help each other land these incredible carp. So for all parties involved, this was the best option and of most importance, the best thing for the carp. Welcome to the latest episode of The Approach. And this time you join us in Nottinghamshire at Trent View Carp Fishery. <laughs> I'm joined by two other sponsored anglers. I've got Lee Randall and Jack Lamb. And I personally have lived very close to this venue. I've fished it for the last eight years, but I know this is the first time the boys have seen it. So it's going to be very interesting what tactics they adopt. What's your first thoughts, Lee? Beautiful venue, good sized lake, gin clear water. I've looked online, checked out a few of the pictures of the fish. Absolute stunning jet black carp. Stunning place, and we've seen a few fish, so it's looking really good. Lovely. Well, one thing to know, we've just arrived. We've actually gone, did some nets, mats and slings, which you must do in the solution when you arrive at Trent View Carp Fishery. We've got pegs eight, nine and 10. So Lee's in 10, I'm in nine, Jack's in eight. We'll see what happens. Hopefully, we'll have a few scaly carp to show you very soon. So here we are, I'm in peg 10. I've got into the swim and straight away I noticed there was a real big area of fizzing about 40, 50 yards out. So what I've done, I've got two rods out of my bag, put on some solid bag and I've got them straight on the fizzing area to try and nick one as quick as I can. The weather's going to be scorching today so I think I'll give it an hour or two on the bottom on the bag and then probably have them in and go all out on the top and see if we can catch a few on the floaters. Not ideal, there it is, look, stuck in the weed. This silk weed's a nightmare. In it goes, didn't even notice netted, look. What a result, rods out an hour. First Trent View carp, perfect. Well mate, what a cracker that is. Yeah, that was a good start. Banging start, isn't it? Yeah, good He's start. He's lovely, he is. Proper dark, little it. fins, lovely little carp, isn't well, it? Can't ask for more than that. Nope. Not even been in an hour. Nope. There's a group of fish tearing it up, threw a bag out there, got it right on them, and uh, yeah, like you say, within an hour, this lovely dark mirror picked up the bait, and uh, yeah, away yeah, we mate, go. Good start. Just the start of things to come. That's it, mate. Seen that it's a really hot day, and the fish have uh, started taking a few mixers. They're a little bit further down to my left, but someone else has been putting a few mixes in. They've just drifted in front of me. Managed to flip one out and uh, it's gone off straight away. First one from a new lake is always a bit special. And it looks like a nice one. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> Uh, after all that, never mind. That's what happens, a bit of floater fishing in the weed is always going to be tricky. That was a nice one. Hopefully I'm going to catch a few of his mates. So with the weather, it was obvious there was a few fish had come up to the surface. I got the floater rod out, got them taking mixers, and uh, yeah, didn't take long at all when I've hooked one. It must be, about, it's probably about lunchtime now and it must be 25, 26 degrees, it's really warm. Next to no wind, perfect floater weather. So hopefully this might be the start of a few. Go on in you get lost. Oh mate. It's Maria. You wish it were Maria. Oh, I'm definitely going to lose a slider here. Hey, hey well done. <laughs> Okay, if, hang on, hang on, don't pull. Oh, we're all right, we're all good. So this one's the result of a little bit of opportunist floater fishing. Lovely mirror carp, nice scaly trimp view. He's an absolute cracker. 
let's get him back and see if we can get another one. So this is the mix I like to use inside my solid bags. I like this ground bait, it's actually for barbel, but it's a real sort of garlicky, fine dark powder with ground pellet in it. And then just a Spodden PVA pellet from Mainline. Lovely mixture of all different size pellets, different breakdowns and colours. And what I've been doing is just injecting the bags with a bit of the old Smart Liquid. Gives it a nice little smelly edge and some of this rises off the bottom, some of it stays into the bottom. Yeah, and I think that's a nice little edge as well. So I'm just going to run you through the bait that I like to use when I'm fishing on the surface. I like to use a nice selection of different size. These are just normal dog biscuits. I've got some of the dynamite floaters in here. Um, other little ones that I've flavoured up over different times. But the main thing I like to do is put a real oily zigga wheel. This is absolutely perfect for on top of your mixers. Get this on there and what it does is it flattens the lake off. So even like today, there's quite a bit of uh, ripple on the lake, but as soon as this oil goes out, it flattens it straight off, stops your mixers from moving into someone else's peg, which will keep the carp in there for longer. And then what I like to do, I just fish all different types of pop-ups until I start getting a bite. And then I'd move over to that for most of the day because once you get one color working, that's normally the key to putting a few on the bank. So I'm just gonna talk you through the floater setup that I'll be using on this session. First of all, I like to use a nice soft floater rod with 12 pound floating main line. That's running down to any designated float. And on the end, I like to attach, I've tied this one up just for um, showing you guys, but I'd like to use about five foot of hook length. And that's just coming down to a size six big point hook, just knotless knot style. But I like to have the, the pop up very tight to the hook. And then just before I'd be casting this out, I'd actually trim it down just around, just trying to make it look like one of the mixers that are out there. I also like to use all different colours as well, so certain days the fish will take a pink one, other days they take the yellow, some days they're on the brown. Be happy to cast that out, especially when the fish are feeding out there. So it's been a little bit of a frustrating 25, 30 minutes there. A lot of fish taking mixers out in front of me. That I think it's Lee further down the bank he's putting in and they're just drifting in front of me. Loz was uh, casting a little bit to his right and I was a bit left. I think I may have poached this one from out in front of him, but we're all friends here. It's got a nice little common this one. Hopefully he's gonna be the first one I put in the net. They do fight on a floater rod. Great fun. Come on, mate. Here we go. Gonna go salmon scoop it. Yes, get in there. Oh. Ooh. Nice one. Skater, but he's not a bad fishing there, that either. They are having it on the top, but at times they're really tricky. As soon as you get a few competing, you've got a chance. A bit like this one. Come on, baby. Nursing it like it's a 40 pounder, I think. Go on then. Lovely. Hopefully that's the start of a few more. So a lovely start here down at uh, Trendview for me. Uh, Lee was putting in some mixers further down the bank and have just started trickling into this bait I'm fishing in. I managed to nick this one off the top. Unfortunately lost a nice one uh, just before this, but really chuffed with this, get off the mark. So finally we're into another one. It's been quite frustrating. I've had them really taking well, but they just wouldn't take the hook bait. I've ended up, I've actually changed the hook length. I've dropped it down a couple of pounds in strength, a bit thinner. And uh, yeah, first cast, we're into another Trent View carp. Hopefully all going well, it's number three. Looks like he's beaten now. Looks like another nice scaly one. It's not Maria, but it's a nice one. There you go. Another linear. There we go. Shrimp view carp number three for me. Lovely fish. I've got to say, they are real quality carp in here. Let's get him back. They're still taking mixers out there. 
Greed is good. Let's get this one back and see if we can get another one. Perfect. So this is the rig I've gone for in my solid bag. It's six inches of 25 pound silk flex, ties to a size eight flexi ring swivel. At the hook end, I'm fishing it slip D style. I've got a size four curve, mini hook ring swivel, curve kicker in small. And on the doubled over section, I like to fish a small piece of putty. I just think it aids to pull the hook down in the bottom lip. I'm fishing it drop off style, so the lead drops off on the take. And that's the rig that done the bite within an hour of casting out. Come in. Hello. Hello, gorgeous. Nice to see you. <laughs> it's picked up on it. Yeah. It's starting to go in. No, just, this is concerning, we might have to go up to your swim, mate. We might have to go up to his swim, lads. It's absolutely it's spooling, mate. We're chasing it down the bank. Jesus. Okay, so we're into another carp. I've just safely landed the other one. It's resting in the net. The guys have gone off to get the cameras and there was still Pac-Man in front of it, so I decided to flick it back out there and straight away, one's come up and nailed it, so. Lee, hopefully, will be on net duty. This thing has stripped. Hopefully, Without it's a bigger one. over-exaggerating, 60 yard probably off it's me. still charging about now, isn't it? And it's, um, did miss a big one earlier, like just eruption on the surface, like a real good end. We well, drew a bigger one, don't we, we are, now? Do, We've we had are. a few. Even if it's a mid to upper 20, yeah. we drew a bigger one. You know, it's hard work, but... The rewards are there. The rewards are there if you put the effort in. That's fishing in general, isn't it? Yeah. The more you put in, the more you get out. Ooh. A scaly one. Proper scaly one. <clears throat> Don't look massive, but he's a nice one. Does not want to come in this fish. It's really putting up a good account of itself. Still charging you know what's nice? To play it on a nice soft rod. soft rod, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the beauty of floater fishing, though, isn't it? Soft rods. Well, we're using small hooks, size six or eight hooks. I won't say size six or small, but certainly the eight. Eights, yeah. You know, light line and soft rods, and we've not had, you know, touch. Like touch wood yet? No, <laughs> no dramas. No dramas so far. Like you say, you're keeping them up in the surface. The silk weed. It's not a lot of other weed. There's no Canadian. There's a little bit of eel grass there, but nothing to worry about. Come on then, sunshine. Yeah, uh, kill. Go on then, son. There we go. Yeah. Perfect. All that for a lovely little scaly one. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, we're not getting through to the big ones yet, but scaly after scaly. You can't grumble at that for day ticket fishing. There you go, second part of the brace, if you like. A couple of Trent View scalies. Let's get him back and see if we can get a bigger one. So things are starting to really kick off now. Loz has just put his brace back. I'd put one back just before Loz caught them two and uh, they are really, really having it. I think if we keep working in the swims, we're in for a big number of fish we could do. Not a bad one. Biggest one of the trip for me, this. In she comes. Perfect. Long fish, nice. How to do? So there we go. That's the biggest one of the float of fishing so far. Twenty-nine pound exactly. Lovely old carp. Really like them little scales on him. Bit weathered, bit beaten up, but nice old carp. Quite a long one. Go on, mate. Yay! There you go. Happy with him. So me and the lads have just had a bit of dinner and we're just going to sort the rods out for the night. Perfect time to be getting the rods out. Sun's just dipping down and hopefully it'll be game on for a few tonight. We've had loads off the top today, it's been roasting hot. And lucky enough, the first thing we done when we come in the peg was felt a few spots. 
once we found a few spots, clipped it up, I know exactly where I am, 21 wraps, is bang on the gravel. If I drag it a little bit too far, maybe 20 and a half, I'm in the silt weed. If I'm on the gravel, I feel like I'm fishing all night, so I'm gonna get all three of them on the money, a few spums over the top. And fingers crossed, if this goes on the money, we'll have a few to show you in the morning. managed to hook into this one. I pulled out of a couple um, in the last 20 minutes. That's what happens with floater fishing, very frustrating, but great fun when you get them. Stressful few hours, to be honest. Fish been all over me and haven't managed to pick anything up off the bottom. But we put a few mixes out, it's perfect, perfect day for floater fishing. Got some mixes out there and we've got them coming up straight away, didn't take long. And we're into our fifth, sixth print view carp. Looks like a nice mirror. See the mixer there just in the side of its mouth. Keep him coming. Get in there. Happy days. Not the biggest in the lake. Cool look at them guy out there. But I'm absolutely over the moon to put another one in the net. Like I say, it's been very stressful, but got to love catching a carp. Oh yeah, he looks nice. In he goes. Lovely. Right, first job, more mixers out, keep them feeding. So Trent View is a boiler and pellet only rule, but that doesn't mean you just need to turn up with straight boiler and straight pellets. There are little things you can do to give yourself an edge. So in this first bucket, this is actually some of the pellet that they sell on the fishery. This is just some of the six mil pellet. What I've done with that is I've actually glugged it up in salmon oil and that's been glugging now for 48 hours. So that pellets really drew in them liquids and hopefully that'll create a lovely flat spot on the surface, either when the fish are feeding or if there's any disturbance around it to let me know that the fish are in the area. And then in here, this is the mainline baits. It's a test bait called the ISO fish. What I've done is I've blitzed this up with the advanced boiler crusher and the particle plate before I come. And in there, there's two or three different liquids I've added over a 48 hour period. So I've got some salmon oil, and I've got a little bit of squid liquid, and I've also got some smart liquid in there as well, and that's a squid one. And this crumb has really taken it on. So if I squeeze it together, it molds into a nice ball. So if, if that crumb is just dry, you've added nothing to it, what will happen is Trent View is really deep and if you end up in the deep pegs, we haven't on this session, we've got 30 to 40 feet in places out there. Um, that Trying to get that down to the bottom of the tail would be an absolute nightmare. But with all the liquids infused into this crumb, it's made it really heavy. So if you wanted to, ball that up, put it in your spawn. So when your spawn opens up, that drops down. Um, but to be honest with you, that crumb would be heavy enough to fall without too much of a tail drifting it away from your spot anyway. Um, and obviously it goes without saying that that has sort of boosted the attraction and the food signals within the bait and it gives you something different to the guy next door. So with boiling pellet only rule, you need to do something a little bit different than the guy next door, otherwise your results will be the exact same. So adding liquids to your baits can be a real massive edge and that's what I've been doing on this session. Oh, never mind. That's a good one. I'll see you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a much better fish, this. Um, just the way that it went off. So it's on the surface at the minute. Yeah, it looks like a good one, this. So I'm going to concentrate because this one could be the session maker for me. It's a big fish, this. Just seen its tail. Please, please, please. I'm just coming down here now. I need to keep them away from them reeds.
Oh my god, I see the hills on it. Definitely could be a 30 pounder. Just get in there. <sighs> oh my days. This fish is a joke. Well, this is why we came to Trent View. Loads of carp, loads of jet black scaly carp. This morning has started off in the best possible way. Today we've got no wind, half hour. It's just been carnage, isn't it? They are absolutely pack man. Proper having it behind us, aren't they? So. Right, we'll just slip these back and catch some more. Yeah, mate, let's get them back. Fish have definitely moved into the shallower water. Uh, Loz was having a proper carve up. He had a real good group of fish and uh, he said, jump down here next to me. So I've jumped in his swim and within about five minutes probably, we're in. So me and Loz, we're actually now working as a team. I'm uh, obviously playing one and Loz is still firing the mixers out to try and keep the fish feeding. Bit of teamwork and hopefully we can get amongst a trimp view big one. All right, you, all right, you. Well netted, Mr. Lawrence. Thanks Thank fun. you, Sam, for letting me fish here. Right, make some more mixes out. Yeah, let's keep them going. Oh, I might struggle with this. Oh, oh dear. Is yours a better one? Yeah, bigger. Yeah, yeah this is the same, mate, 100%. Where there weren't as many, we've had a pack of big ones come in. This is the one, boy. We've got so much weed on this line, it's a joke. There's just a massive group of fish here now, aren't there? They're jumping out over Mate, the back. It's, it's literally 15 yards from us. <laughs> I reckon someone's pulled the plug out of the lake there. Don't look at <laughs> it. Another common for me. Joke. Wait there, Loz, I'm coming out. I can't even see it, mate. There's so much weed on it, it's a joke. It's a real good mess. It's quite a way behind, isn't it? Yeah. Six for Auckland, God. Yeah, yeah. That weed's a problem, mate. This is freaking awkward, this. I know. It's underneath us, mate. Get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. Get it, get it. In you go, mate. Yes. Good get work, in there. Brother. that was. Woo, yeah boy. So there we go, part of the double take with Loz. Beautiful mid-20 common, absolute perfect condition. Real cool scaling. Right, let's get it back, more bait out, and see if we can get another one. Well, that's a better one, isn't it? That's what we're here for, that's mate. That's a mentor That's a real Trent view, uh, dark scaly carp, what we come for, ain't it? Perfect. That's what Trent is all about. Honestly, I know we keep saying it, but um, they're getting bigger and we've had some lovely fish now. So we have, yeah. We're going to have a little change of tactic now. Um, we're going to come off the surface and we're going to put the ziggos out there, one rod each, and uh, continue to feed because it's just going to make the feeding process a lot easier if the rods are out there fishing, isn't it? 100%, mate. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Yeah. We'll get this one back. And make the most of this opportunity, try and get another one, hopefully on a ziggo next time. Absolutely. What a fish, right. though. Okay, so I've just set the ziggo up. Um, Lee's gone down to his swim to set his up as well. We're going to fish one each. The fish are still taking, so I'm, uh, I'm very keen to get it out there. And like I said, all this is for is to be able for me and Lee to continue to feed a lot easier. So without further ado, and get this out, see if we can nick a bite on it. Oh, that's got it. Oh, 
so you join me mid battle. Um, hey, up, mate, Lee's just literally walked into the swim. Chuck my, please, mate, I've chucked my Ziggo out, started taking, and had the most savage bite. I've literally just got it touching the surface, the up, mate. Um, I didn't want it over. In this situation, we're so close, I can exactly pinpoint where I wanted it, but I wanted a little bit of tension just on the surface. And yeah, it's, um, it's worked, I'll put it this way. It's a lot easier than float fishing. Sit back, relax, feed, and uh, wait for that rod to go. So hopefully, we get this in. First one on the Ziggo, then we've caught off the bottom on a Ziggo and off the surface, so um, this could be full house. There you go, baby. Oh, mate. One. No, look at white tips on its tail. Oh, yeah. Caught a few white tips. Absolutely. The rarest carp in the lake. He's a mega cool character. Great big scale on this side, white tips on his tail, and the first one on the Ziggo. Mint. Okay, so this is the Ziggo that I've used to very good effect on this session. For all intents and purposes, it's an adjustable Zig setup. However, these things cast due to the sort of streamline effect of it like an absolute bullet. And there's no need to have a lead either because the magnetic section just clipped together nice and simply and then on impact with the water, that will break away. The lead section will fall to the bottom. You open your bail arm, or peel your line off, the bubble section will pop to the surface and then on here, I've got a roughly a three foot hook link, but what I've done is I've measured it from the butt eye down to the bail arm, so that basically I know exactly how far to pull back once it floats under. If I pull back from the butt eye down to the bail arm, I know that this will be just on the surface or just underneath, so then I can start working my way down those layers. Just got a simple size at six, apex beak point on there. And what I've done is I've got a little tiny mainline baits maple trim down pop up on there. That's just to imitate floaters that have been putting out there. And I've used it to really good effect and the takes which I'm sure you'll see during this video, have been nothing short of absolutely savage. Um, I've had this literally just cocked on top of the surface, so if I pulled it anymore, it'd go under, so that that sort of hook link is tensioned, and the minute then fish suck it in, it's game over. So we're having a great bit of fun this morning, catching these fish off the top, where we've had quite a few taken. It's worked out a lot easier to flick out these ziggos, basically like an, a an adjustable zig but it's one way that you can suspend your hook bait on the surface and then keep the mixers going round it the whole time so you don't need to keep worrying about chasing the carp round in she goes first one on the zigo lovely get in there Lovely. Right, we'll get this one unhooked. It's still eating the mixers out there, so definitely get a few more mixers out. Sort the rods back out, sort this fish out. Hopefully we bang a few more out today. Absolute wicked fishing. Rather than having to cast out all the time, your bait's suspended in the water and it's always fishing. So let's get this one back and then hopefully we can catch a few more on it. Okay, we're into another fish on a Ziggo. They've actually performed really well. All three of us now are catching quite consistently on them, um, which, is, which is nice. It makes um, surface fishing that little bit easier. Especially it's nice to wear your alarms as well. You get a screaming take with it. They're working really well. He's nailed in bottom lip. Okay, so that is the result of teamwork. One of us spotting, the other one getting zig ready, and um, yeah, them ziggos are really, really working now. And um, we can't really keep a rod in the water, can we? <laughs> I don't know how many we've had now. To be honest, I've lost count. I know. It's been absolute mayhem today. I think we're well over 20 fish now, probably on, onwards towards 30, so yeah, it's going exceptionally well. Let's get them back out of this heat. We'll check that out. That's definitely the session maker for me. 29 pound, 15 ounces. Just under that magical 30 pound mark on the Ziggo. Jet black, scaly, 
yeah, definitely a session maker. She goes. Just a joke, mate. Carp, carp, carp. All about the carp. Well, have a look at that. Got up this morning early, made the most of the morning feeding spell, and um, yeah, this is one of a couple of Trent View scalers. Well, there you go. The result of getting up early this morning and making the most of that morning feeding spell. The biggest of the trip, 31 pound. Well, what a way to end a truly incredible trip at Trenbu Fishery. Massive credit to both Jack and Lee. I think between us, we've had well over 60 fishing this week. I had a couple of 30 pounds this morning myself, and Lee's managed one called the original as well. So it's been a fantastic trip. Thank you both for coming. Hope you guys have learned something as well. And then I'll pass it over to the boys to have the last word. Yeah, insane. Some of the best float fishing I've ever experienced in my life. The Ziggo fishing as well, that was crazy. Yeah, just thank you Trimp View. Yeah, I can't say much more than that. These fish have been absolutely stunning. They are insane. Right, let's let them go.